Welcome to another episode of Autograph Tips and Discussion. One of the things that I wanted to talk about today was is how to prep cards and how to you know get them for the most optimal autograph on your card. There are a few things that I want to point out. Uh, first of all, what type of cards need powdering? Pretty simple. Here is an example of an upper deck. Uh, this is a college, you know, Texas Longhorns greats type of set, and it is highly glossy. So this would be one that you definitely would want to put baby powder or prep or erase, however you like to do it. To give some examples of older cards, this is why you want to powder your cards. As you can see from this 2001, I believe, Bowman, yeah, 2001 Bowman, this Ben Davis autograph is just horrendous uh, because I didn't powder it. So this is the result of what you get. So to avoid this from happening, you have to put some powder or erase the card. Now, with that said, there are other cards that you might not think need powdering, but they actually do. And I point to a couple examples here, going back in the vintage era. Uh, number one are 1980 and 1981 tops. For some reason, there's a little bit of gloss on these that just makes the signature not look great. And I'm going to try to zoom in on Bob Stanley here. But you can see, uh, you can see how the signature is kind of bubbly, just not sharp. Okay. I have another one here with Rick Waits, which is a lot better. And I think I probably threw some powder on this before I had him sign it. But this Bob Stanley card. As you can see, without the camera too much freaking out, you know, has these bubble issues, which are just weird. I've also had trouble, and I don't have an example. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. Um, I don't have an example of a signed one, but I've also had that trouble with the 81 tops as well. So, these type of cards, even though they are vintage, I would recommend doing something to them. Otherwise, your autograph may turn out like this Bob Stanley, and it's not too great. Another type of set to point out that I, let me just say I overdo it, I guess, is a set like this 1988 um, Donruss. And this isn't the regular Donruss set. This is what I would say the all-star set or whatever they call it. And this kind of has a different gloss touch to it as well. So this would be a card also that I would recommend powdering before you get it signed. Moving forward a little bit, past the 80s, this is a 2000, I believe 2000, I may be wrong, yes, a 2000 upper deck. So upper deck cards, you know, basically from 2000 to current, probably need some sort of preparation so you don't get the bubbling effect like on that Ben Davis that I showed. Uh, so moving on, what are some of the cards you don't need to prep? Okay, This is just my experiences with these sets. Um, I may be wrong, maybe some people prep these anyway, but I, I personally don't because I've had good luck. Um, I just happen to have a bunch of Scott Bales cards here so we'll go through all of them. So, uh, the 89 Donners, shouldn't need any prep work at all. The 88 Tops, no prep work. 91 Score, same. The Tops Traded, unless you have the Tops Tiffany cards, which have a gloss to them, you don't necessarily need to prep them in any way whatsoever either. And also, I threw this Upper Deck down here because the Upper Decks do have a little bit of gloss on them, but... The early upper deck cards from the 89, 90, 91, 92, they don't need prepping. Now I think in 1993 they came out with a different glossy finish, so anything 
going back to 2000, I, I just said, I would say anything from 93 up on upper deck probably needs some prepping. And I've got a copy of a Goodwin Champions card here, which is a more recent issue, I'm going to say 2012, so that's already six years old. But something like this would not need prepping. So with that said, I'm going to reset up my setup here and show how to get your cards prepped for optimal autograph purposes. Okay, sorry about that break in the video, but now I'm going to show you what you need to prepare your cards. Now some people use different methods. I prefer to use baby powder when I prep my cards. Okay, there are other people that prefer to use what they call erasers. Okay, and I've read that the high polymer erasers are better quality for whatever reason. Um, I very, 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 very rarely use this to prep my cards. And what you do is basically you take the card and you basically take the eraser and you erase the finish off of the card. Okay? You erase, 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 erase. I'm not going to do it with this card um, only because, well, I'll do a little bit of it. What the heck? So I'm just going to do this top corner and you just try to rub it down until finally the finish is completely rubbed off and it gives less of a gloss finish to you. Now, I know a lot of people that have done this method. I personally don't like this method. I personally feel that you're kind of damaging your cards when you're doing that. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I may be wrong. Uh, there are many different other ways um, you know, to prep your cards. Some people like to think that um, a certain marker may be better than a Sharpie, that you don't need to prep your cards, which is perfectly fine. You know, it's your collection. It's however you want to keep them. Um, over the years, I've just found that using the baby powder is the best method to do so. We're going to toss the eraser aside here because I don't, I don't use that anyway. I do, however, carry it in my bag. You just never know. And speaking of a few things uh, that I carry around with me is I carry this in my uh, backpack whenever I go to a game. And this is what I call my emergency baby powder. Sometimes um, like a rover or somebody like that might show up and I just am not prepared for them and I have to do it right on the cusp. Um, I pull this little tiny bottle out of my bag and powder my cards. Uh, again, I normally buy the economy size baby powder when I'm doing this at home, but these seem to fit perfectly in my bag. You know, make sure you uh, have some Kleenexes and some paper towels, uh, whatever, you know, surface that you prefer to wipe your cards off with. Um, I've been known to go to a stadium and find a picnic table and just sit down and start powdering my cards. I've done that before, uh, sometimes on like team set giveaway night or something like that. Uh, some of the team sets might have that glossy finish to them rather than risking the you know the opportunity for the card to bubble or streak or whatever I just sit down and I go to town and I go through and powder them all. My philosophy is yet yeah, it's very time consuming but I'd rather get a quality autograph than a smudge smeared bubbled streaked autograph on a card that might not you know have the autograph stick to it. A couple things when you're doing this at home now, or you know, I guess you can bring all this on the road with you if you want. I'm going to simply move my sign out of the way again so I don't get baby powder on it or make too huge of a mess. But um, you need paper towel. That's what I do. I always lay a paper towel down. And I usually get all the cards that I am going to powder. And I lay them down on the towel and I usually say okay what am I going to powder here well I try to find the most shiniest most glossy most chrome whatever you want to call it card and what I do since I have a small stack here 
is I make that what I call the base guard. Okay, so I take my baby powder and I just simply dump a bunch on it. Now some people seem to think that, you know, less powder, better powder, whatever. I always look at it as, hey, more, more is better than not having enough. So one of the essentials you need is a Kleenex. I always like to uh, get, get a few of them out here. So you need your Kleenexes, you got your powder, you make your base card. Now, mind you, when I do this, this is a small stack, okay? I sometimes can sit down and have a hundred cards stacked here. So what I'll do is I'll just lay out about four or five of those Bowman Chromes or, you know, uh, Donner's Elites or whatever, and I'll just lay them out and I will go between each base card and what I do is I try to divvy it up, you know, how many times I, I do the card. But to make this video short, we're just going to powder these, you know, this stack of small cards right here. If you noticed, I put the Al Roboski in there, the 81, 81 tops. I again go back to, I think it's important that you powder the 80 and the 81 tops, uh, maybe even the 78s, I'm not positive. But for some reason, the autograph just does not stick well on these cards. That's just my opinion, as I showed you with the Bob Stanley. Um, we talked a little bit about this 88 Donruss. You may or may not need to do it, but I just do it as a precaution if I want to get it signed and have a nice signature. Um, this card in particular, if you look close enough, there's a big old crease right down the middle of it. You know, so it's highly far from a mint card, so that's why I didn't mind using the eraser on that. And, you know, some of the earlier, you know, earlier of this decade from the early 2000s, these Jason Hart cards definitely need powdering on them too. So, I simply do this. Um, I do overkill, I guess you would call it, but what I do is I just dump the powder back and forth between the cards, and I count to myself roughly between 10 to 15, sometimes up to 20, depending on how glossy the card is. So I just go back and forth, rocking the cards back and forth, powder, 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 and like I said, when I get to about 10 to 15 I set the base card down and I simply wipe off take my Kleenexes and I simply wipe off the card and I got a little on my hands there so you know sometimes residue sticks but I simply wiped off the card after that 10 to 15 back and forth and it's good for signing and that's that's my process again maybe it's overkill uh, I've seen other people that just simply like to lay their cards down and you know do it like this one card at a time hey whatever works for you is what I tell people so you know th this is just my method you know I've been powdering cards for a long time uh, as a matter of fact my uh, wife is very very uh, helpful in this process she'll sit down across from me at the table and we'll both powder cards you know it's one of those things that my wife isn't a big autograph collector but I kind of kind of drug her into the hobby whether she likes it or not so I'm not going to sit here and bore you with powdering all of these cards it's a very you know long and tedious process during the baseball season um, gosh I could spend two, two, three hours a day doing this. And I know that's a lot of devotion to just powdering, you know, baseball cards or whatever. But I go back to if you want a top quality autograph in your collection, you have to put a little time in before. Okay. And, you know, the purpose of these videos is to give you some tips, you know. This is how I personally do things. You can, of course, modify this to however you like doing it. But if I'm going to trade an autograph or if I'm just going to have it in my collection, I always give the cards to potentially be signed a certain treatment. Now, there's another thing I'm probably going to talk about later on, and that's what you call 50-15. And I've had experience, you know, both positive and negative. And 
whenever I 50-50 with somebody, I sit down and I powder not just the cards I want back, but I powder the cards that they are going to keep as well. You know, that's this proper etiquette. You know, I've, I've had people send me cards unprepped, and I'm like, you seriously want me to sit down and prep all of your cards? What do I get out of that? You know, so there's just a few things that you got to watch out for. There are people that try to take advantage of other people in this hobby. Um, that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. But I hope this video has been informative for you. Um, I will uh, hope to post some uh, future videos. Please feel free to leave some of your comments down at the bottom and let me know what your feedback is. If there's a video that you would like to ask a question about, you know, feel free to shoot a video and say, hey, remember the greats? You know, how do you do X, Y, Z? You know, I'll be more than happy. I'm always open for suggestions and ideas. I'm, I'm on Twitter at RTGS sports i shorten it so it's not a big long remember the great sports so rtg sports on twitter um feel free to you know tweet or whatever you want to do i look forward to uh sharing with you a lot more of this stuff so thank you